How fast was that? I literally, I think I did it. Yes. Right, that's ridiculous. So the RX10 literally locked onto that seagull. Last second, I just caught it catch while I zoomed in slightly. It is crazy how, how the focusing system actually works and how quickly it locked on. And I was only at about 200 millimeters, wasn't even zoomed in heavily. So it still just tracked tracked the bird as it flew on, on you know, sort of below me. Um, same there, it just locked straight on. So really, really usable. Uh, you know, so getting shots with ease, shall we say? Um, but really, really good light really helps, especially with image quality and obviously the way it focuses. Moths. And then butterflies and grasshoppers. So found um, quite a few of the little bugs, and which sounded thousands and sounded like thousands of uh, grasshoppers probably was. Um, you can spot them quite easily, but if you get too close with a macro lens, they'll bugger off. You've got to be very, very slow and patient. They might, they're quite clever, grasshoppers. So, or crickets, they seem to um, sort of watch you and they'll move around or hop away if you get too close. Um, but with the RX10 Mark IV, it's actually got a 92 centimeter or 920 millimeter. Uh, minimal focus, so you're actually quite a long way away from your subject. So if you're slow and a bit careful, you can get shots like this, and the same as the grasshopper in a second, without any issues. Um, with the macro lens, yes, you're going to get closer and bigger, bigger images, more detail. But sometimes they're so sort of skittish and everything that you're not going to get the shot um, without a bit of distance between you. So having that range. You know ability, which is really cool. And also, it will focus very close, like down to about two inches, I think, um, at 24 millimeters. So really wide angle, but really close focusing, um, which gives you some really nice, nice shots, especially of the plants and things. Works really well. Um, but here's the grasshopper shot. So that was taken at minimal focus, 92 centimeters, um, and cropped in a little bit there, just so you can see the detail. So nice and sharp on his head. That was just done with spot focus. on the RX-10 you probably can't even see this but I have on my function menu I have face detect turned on at the moment flash flash mode got one spare one there oh no object tracking sorry uh, focus area so this is one I use a lot I've got the ISO there but you don't need the ISO because it's there on the right hand side you can adjust it as is um, but they're sort of my main bits of use shall we say Hi. Can I have a Cornetto, please? Just a chocolate one or classic one or whatever? Strawberry? Have we got the other one? The chocolate one? Or? Yeah, chocolate. Thank you. Thanks, Lord. Thank you. Cheers. So I had a little wander along the beach, uh, the bottom of Berlin Gap, sort of heading towards Beachy Head, and uh, I'll sped this up a little bit just because it's quite a long walk actually, um, to where the sort of sea met the bottom of the cliff because the tide was in. Um, so a little bit of slow motion, 500 frames a second from the RX-10. Uh, unfortunately water had splashed already on the lens so I didn't realise it was there, you couldn't actually see it until too late unfortunately. Um, but you know, slow down. You do have to do a slight little bit of sharpening, uh, 500 and a thousand frames per second, just to keep it looking quite sweet. And uh, it does, uh, you know, it's just one of those amazing things. A little bit of slow motion just looks so cool. Uh, same as the next bit here, which looks quite cool. So the waves crashing. Unfortunately, they weren't huge, um, but as you can see. It's all sploshy and it was kind of cool the way the the white and everything looks 
you know, against the uh, the white water rather it looks against the, uh, the actual cliff itself um, but what I've done there is I've, I've left it a relatively quick slow motion as such and then slowed it right down to its 500 frames per second um, during the sort of most important bit and then obviously sped it back up again like so uh, same here another 500 frames per second shot for some reason when it renders the water generally the sea you can see is a kind of a funny hue as such on in the water uh, you don't get it very often apart from on a really sunny day it's almost like the reflections are causing causing issues it still looks pretty good though um, the other way to get around it is converted to black and white as you see the boat splashing away which looks quite cool um, that was at 600 uh, millimeters and then uh, spinning back up slightly and then um, a small tanker went past, so he was offshore by a little while, I'm not sure what it was, but um, yeah, shot at uh, 600mm f 5.6. Unfortunately, really warm, lots of heat haze, so a bit of distortion. Uh, some, I'm guessing they were foreign students, they were flying a kite, because it was quite windy up, up on the cliffs, so that was quite cool, lots of colour. Um, while I was up there, obviously photographing the lighthouse, different view here from the uh, war memorial. Um, different view there of the lighthouse with the big rocks and everything, that's quite cool. Um, the Sovereign Light, which I think is four miles offshore. So, what I've done is I've cropped in probably three times on this, and then obviously zoomed in even more as much as possible. You can see the heat haze. Um, and then, it's a classic shot there of the, uh, the cliffs. So, all anywhere between 300 600 mil kind of shots there. Really quite good in the wind. And then we headed to, oh, I can't say we, then I headed to the pier. So, you've got the bandstand there, and then sort of where they do concerts and, and things, which is quite nice. And you can see the pier in the distance. So, I'm headed towards the pier. Loads of people sunbathing and just enjoying the weather. It was absolutely stunning. The water was actually that colour. I haven't changed any colouring or anything like that. It was absolutely lovely today, very clear um, and then uh, I sort of wandered on the pier just did a sort of bit of real world photography really um, that's where the RX-10 Mark, come, Mark 4 comes into its own you can put it in complete silent mode so no one's got a clue that you're doing your little snap here or there of people doing their things um, lots of old people around enjoying the ice creams and, and things with their um, you know, obviously spare time uh, lots of amusements and ice creams and fish and chips and things like that so plenty of things going on um, but the weather was absolutely lovely as you can see here just about to take a shot I thought I'd take a shot of just stuff really so this is a shot here of the big expanse of floor floor space um, there you go so straight out of camera just zoomed in or zooming in rather you can see there uh, shot at f5.6 on the RX10 Mark IV you've got f2.4 to f5.6 is sort of its optimal range so f4 is in that range it's definitely very sharp apparently f5.6 is its sharpest um, but I have no issues with the f4 especially at 600mm and at 2.4 at 24mm it's very sharp and nice and shallow as well when focusing uh, to something relatively close um, quite a lot of stuff randomly on, on the piers, a florist or something there, some flowers for sale. Um, lots of amusements everywhere, lots of seating, and uh, there was a random canoeist, or two canoes. Um, and then just people doing things, I just thought, you know, take a few snaps here or there of people doing things. Um, straight out of the camera, it's, you know, it's impressive. It's such a usable piece of kit. Uh, even spotted my car from, say, miles away, but from right over where I, where I parked. Um, can even read the number plate nice and clearly, even though it's a little bit of heat haze there. You can actually read the number plate quite quite happily. So it's probably half a mile away or something. This is cool. So the old, I'm guessing it's an old boat jetty from where they used to do the boat trips along, and uh, it's proper. I'd love to do a photo shoot on there, but you can't really get there very easily without a boat. 
Uh, this is cool. Slow motion, 500 frames a second. Water coming up, bursting up through the uh, sort of foot plate. It looks so cool. Um, it wasn't doing it when I first arrived, and then I sort of walked back. I noticed it, and I thought, "Oh, that's kind of cool." So um, managed to capture that, which is pretty awesome. So as the water rose, and then all of the seagulls landed, and I don't know why. Um, hundreds of them. Um, right below me as well, there was loads. Um, and then the odd one still flying around, but they were just—it was bizarre. And then they all took off randomly as well. So pff, they're obviously talking to each other about stuff. Plenty of um, activities going on. So lots of people sunbathing, skateboarders, and rollerbladers, or roller, you know. Um, and then people are still wandering around. Plenty of old people, retired, lot. Miss Eastbourne for you. Um, but everyone's enjoying themselves. Um, it was 22 degrees, so if you're in a different country and it's a lot warmer than that, that's not very warm. But in England, that's quite a nice temperature. There wasn't, there was a breeze, but it wasn't ridiculous. Um, and they got the slot machines and stuff there. This was quite cool. So the sun was shining through the cast iron railings and the wooden floor onto the floor, so giving you a nice shadow um, sort of shot. And then this seagull landed literally right in front of me, and I managed to get. Uh, say right in front of me, he's probably about a metre and a half from me so I managed to get some really cool shots and he just sort of sat there looking at me uh, obviously wanted to be fed um, but that shows you the, the drop off of um, depth you can get at 600mm f4 and it's mega sharp, it's lovely so that works really really well, quite impressed with that and then this shot here, the seagull literally was above me, it flew above me, I just aimed the camera up this is how fast it focuses, boom, got it um, literally half a second or less and uh, run it and then this shot here the last one is of a visit Eastbourne so I just saw it two people sat there enjoying the weather and their brolly and uh, the lovely sea and everything there and you'll see the advertising in the background so on the back of the chairs um, that's it guys so yeah hopefully that was a few little things there you can see what I've been up to and um, yeah, so please subscribe, please uh, keep watching, and please ask questions. So, if you've got any questions about the camera at all? So, obviously, I'm using the RX10 Mark IV for most of my days out. But it's just snapping away, but if I get into the photo shoots and jobs and things like that, it's generally the A7R3. But the RX10 Mark IV has its place with side by side on jobs, uh, video, and, and, and actually some stills as well because it is it's good enough quality um, as well so anyway um, that's cool so uh, chat soon